because they are in denial. Denial of this truth will cause destiny to avoid you. See, one thing I can tell you is that those who are in denial of who they are and where they are, destiny will avoid them. It is an invitation into obscurity, into darkness. That is the lie that we want to live. A lot of us are generationally programmed to live a lie. Your parents live the lie, and their parents live the lie. And so you live the lie, and you believe the lie, and you get the results of the lie. See, the lie is like a bitter seed that has been planted in a garden, and you have eaten forbidden fruit. And your bloodline has eaten from the forbidden fruit for decades. And so the truth is the truth. And you must bend to its power or live a lie. Nobody wants to bend. But there is beauty. There is brilliance in bending. And yielding. And surrendering. And you cannot bend without humility. You've got to break out of self-denial. I gotta put down my ego. I have to put down my insecurities. I have to put down my pride. And I have to yield. I have to surrender. I have to let go of what was for what is. This is the reality. And the moment that I accept reality, all of a sudden, everything changes. When we accept the truth, and we bend to its power, and we step out of lying into living. This is freedom. The man who lives and lies, the man who is his own prisoner, the truth will set you free. Nothing more. The truth will set you free. Nothing more. Peace and blessings, everyone. Elegant champagne. This uh, early morning, um, AM motivation um, for my own therapeutic purpose for, for like recovering physically and um, just mentally and spiritually as well. Um, I just pray that this is an inspiration to you as well as my own self. And I uh, just whatever you're doing, continue to do it, man. Because as long as it's uh, a positive cause and a purpose, man, to reach and inspire the lives of others, that's really what it should be for. Um, listen, God has blessed us all with many different gifts, talents, and abilities. And sometimes we need to really recognize that and utilize that for us to actually really touch and reach a lot of others who may not really understand what their purpose is. And there's a way to incorporate any and everything that God has blessed us with to be a blessing to others. Those, those gifts are in for us to keep to ourselves. Study strategy over the years so, that being and said, achieve the spirit inspired. of the warrior. Today is a victory over yourself of yesterday. Tomorrow is your victory over lesser men. There is a student mentality in all of us that must be tapped into. A student is resilient. A student is disciplined. It is only through discipline that you will experience the freedom of a warrior. A student never surrenders. See, the strategy is the plan. The strategy, the game plan, the plan of action, the recipe, the how must be studied before the first step is taken. I am convinced that so many of us lose because of what we were not willing to study. We must grow a discipline to deliberately investigate what we are getting ready to enter into. We must be calculated as we enter into new seasons, into new relationships. This is the road to becoming a warrior. An experienced, skilled, and calculated soldier. A fighter, a game changer. Somebody who refuses to stay down. This is somebody who is set apart from those who operate in the realm of normalcy. This is somebody who is above and beyond. We got a bit of a work ethic to go after it. A student is a disciple, and a disciple is disciplined. Disciplined to achieve the spirit of the warrior. 
They are perfectly positioned for victory daily. Discipline is an invitation out of normalcy. A man who studies is a man who is allergic to average. Do you are a warrior and you don't even know it. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. After today, everything is about to change. Because change starts with you. To understand this is to know the difference between men and lions. You must understand that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. And in this very moment, all you have is all you need. See, somebody lied to you and told you that life is about acquiring more to move forward. And what if I told you that getting to the top of the mountain was not about acquiring more, but about becoming more? That if you can become, then you will find your authentic path to the top. Everybody wants to go to the top, but nobody wants to discover new ways to climb there. Find your authenticity. Discover your identity. We're all told, if you want to get to the top, follow the leader. But that is a broken mentality. Yes, leaders are necessary, but we must be fully aware when we have been called to lead, to blaze our own trail to discover a new way. It's daunting, it's exhausting to get to the top. But there is more than one way and you will discover that way by not acquiring. So it is not the more that you get, the faster you go. It is the more you become, the quicker you will elevate. And so getting to the top of the mountain has more to do with becoming than acquiring. What is your mountain? What is your trial? Who is the giant standing in front of you? Name it and defeat it. The climb is just as important as the arrival. The top is the end game, but the process is what will make you. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of this world. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone, at the end of your ego and your insecurities. But when you come to the end of yourself and the beginning of the understanding of our world, why we are here and what is our purpose, then all of a sudden everything changes. Think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. The world is vast. Over 7.5 billion people walk the face of this planet. There is so much here. Creation, the antelope, the trees, the mountains, the stars, people from every nation in every tongue. We have economy. We have industry. We have technology. We are more advanced than ever before. So take a moment and agree never to self-sabotage yourself. No more self-condemnation. That you cease to see the opportunities in this world. How beautiful our planet is. To think lightly of yourself and deeply of this world is an invitation out of your ego out of your insecurities, out of what you think you cannot do. It is to look beyond your program. It is to think of your legacy. It is to think of what you will leave behind. It is to think of your contribution and your impact. Even in this moment, in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation, ask yourself the question, what can I contribute? You see, conflict 
is necessary. Trial is, is needed. It causes us to create, to be proactive, to be inventive. It moves us to become pioneers. What type of mark will you leave in the earth? What will be your legacy? Man has always been haunted by the vastness of eternity. And so we ask ourselves, when we are long gone, will our names remain? self-discipline is that it is necessary for everything you do in your life. You have to be self-disciplined. Working out. Working out, you got to work out every day. You got to stay in shape. If you want to, I mean, if you don't stay in shape, you die. When I'm working out, I always do one extra rep, one extra set, because it, it's a promise I kept to myself. But, but working out might not be a priority for every single day because you've got things going on in your business world and with your family and all that. So guess what? It's a priority for my life, so I do it in the morning before my day even starts. If you change your mindset and really focus it on what discipline really is, you start to welcome discipline. You welcome self-discipline into your life. And here's the biggest thing. It's a pattern. It's a pattern I keep of me. I always do a little extra. I always go the extra inch. And the quickest and easiest place to do it is the gym. Because I can always grab one more weight, one more set. And it, here's what it does. It shifts your identity. The benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done. I do it in the morning before my day even starts. So I can still handle the priorities for the day but I got my workout done. So long term, I look up in a year and I'm not out of shape and breathing hard when I go up in the stairs because I maintain that discipline on a daily basis. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. You need to tell you no more snacks, no more desserts, no more TV, no more, no, we working out now. They have skills and abilities, but if you don't nurture them, if you don't develop them, they will never serve you. Your gifts can take you many places if you develop your gifts. The best gifts come from the bottom. I value myself enough to give 120% or don't do it. And that if you decide that my life deserves my developing, this is what I do well. Why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts, you'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character. You need to tell you that you owe you something. As you begin to develop and expand your skills and your talents and your vision of yourself, you will always be in control of your destiny. I want freedom. And for me, discipline in myself means more freedom. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more. People go, well, why do you run if you hate it? What are you talking about? 
I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole that, that's life, man. That and and, and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school, so guess what? I was dumb as. But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one so I can handle what life is going to throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just going to crumble and you're good for nobody. 99% of people are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. The center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. You know, some, something as simple as food and eating, it, it's not about your, your body as much as it is about your mind. It's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best interest. Every day, we are choosing shit that's not in our own best interest. So if the world is attacking you and the world wants to fight you and the world's trying to hold you down, so you're going to kick yourself in the balls? So you're going to stop yourself from getting what you dream. And I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name. We think about it in terms of punishment. I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in that way. I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you, you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love. That when you say that you love yourself, that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving. Self-discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Self-love is when you say to yourself, oh, man, look, I know you and that girl got a real connection. Um, I know y'all vibe, but that's your girl's cousin. So I love you too much to let you do that. It's like you say to yourself, hey man, look, I know you wanna eat that pizza and it'll be really good, you know, but I can't let you eat that, man. Cause if, if you eat that pizza, you gonna feel like shit. You know, and I, I just, I love you too much to let you eat that. Self-love is, hey, look, I know you got a, a, a test on Monday, you know, and I know you really want to go out with your friends and Saturday night you want to go out, but if you fail that test, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know, I just, I love you too much to let you go out tonight. Self-discipline is self-love. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself, which means you have to discipline your behavior. The road to sustained happiness is through disciplining your behavior. We tend to base our self-esteem on what other people think. And that's not really self-esteem. Self-esteem is supposed to be how we feel about ourselves. And I was just saying how dangerous it is to allow other people to determine how you're going to feel about you. And it's kind of like looking into a broken mirror. You're going to look in a broken mirror and then change your face to try to look good in this defiled, busted, broken mirror. And it, it just other people's opinions 
is a really sh way to determine how we feel about ourselves. Life can be brutal. Life can be unforgiving. If I had to sum up in one word the difference between the greats and the average, the difference between the successful and the nobodies of the world, one word, one attribute to describe the difference, discipline. If you don't have the discipline, you can forget about the trophy. You can forget about the success, the greatness. All champions have discipline. It's the discipline to work hard. You know, not when everyone is watching, but when no one is watching, when the fans aren't there, when the coach isn't there, when it's just you and your character. The discipline to eat strong, healthy foods. When you have other tempting options. When those around you might not be so strong. The discipline to say no. When those around you choose to be average. The discipline to keep going when it hurts. Because life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. And if you haven't worked for it, if you haven't sacrificed for it, if you haven't given your all, then you don't deserve it. And you won't get it. Push through the pain. On the other side is growth. When pain comes, that means it's time to show character. Show me your character. Remain disciplined. Stay strong. When it all seems hopeless, keep plugging away. Nothing can stop you if you don't stop for anything. Don't stop for anything. Never break your discipline. Remain faithful to yourself and your vision. When it gets painful, push harder. Push through the pain. You gotta have the discipline. To do 11 when your opponent stops at 10. The discipline to keep going when it hurts. Because life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. And if you haven't worked for it, if you haven't sacrificed for it, if you haven't given your all, then you don't deserve it. And you won't get it. Show your character. Remain disciplined. Stay strong. Don't say why the pain. Don't say why me. Say try me. Say is that all you've got? Give me more. Keep plugging away. When there seems to be no hope of victory. When you don't see the results. Hang in there. Be strong. Be brave. Remain disciplined. And your time will come. Peace and blessings, everyone. I weighed like 297 pounds. And For you guys, have been inspired to stay motivated. You know, I was at all time listen, low. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're maybe experiencing, I wasn't going to work. And I was exactly what everybody this, said I was going to be, which was nothing. I appreciate it with gratitude, man. This man is a self-made beast. Utilize it for whatever considered to be you feel the that toughest be an man on the planet and one of the greatest me. endurance athletes of all time. I was just an insecure, scared kid. It's just and the only a lot of way I could find myself are was where at for a reason. Put myself and the worst thing possible. Most people they they tend to He's the only member of the US Armed Forces run to SEAL from training, that. Let me pause the this US Army moment. Ranger School and the Air Force Tactical Air Control. A lot of people tend to get stuck when it comes to them in a position of 
observation. And I, I say this because there's been like a, a few different things that I've been recognizing um, lately, just, just from um, observing. And a lot of people are tending to distract themselves with their lack of observation skills. Um, when I say that, I mean, when we see or recognize certain things, it's not always for us to always engage or for us to necessarily feel that we have to pitch in. Uh, a lot of times uh, when we hear that phrase of learning to pick and choose your battles, we, we feel that that's only battles that's, that comes to us, that confronts us. But sometimes the battle can just be the battle of the urge to feel that we have to make an approach for certain things. And that right there is learning to pick and choose your battles because that's technically choosing a battle. And when we get caught in that, we, we end up utilizing the wrong skill sets. It's like going into a battle and you're going into the battle with the wrong type of tools or weaponry. And it, what it usually would be uh, an advantage for, this time would be utilized as a disadvantage. And in this case, um, overly analytical or overly uh, observative behaviors, demeanors, and things to that nature can actually be uh, utilized as one's own weapon, basically where they have uh, self-inflictions on themselves, self-inflicted pain. And when I say self-inflicted pain, that's just stemming from them basically engaging in a battle where that's not even meant for them to engage with and they're going in with the wrong ammunition, the wrong mindset, the wrong demeanors. And when that takes place, that literally um, puts a person at a disadvantage uh, for them to develop their own character. Because when they go into battle and they end up having these experiences, uh, feelings, emotions, uh, mindsets, thoughts, whatever, perspectives, those things end up being uh, falsely analyzed and it gives a false impression of the receiver and also the giver. And when that takes place, it gives a false sense of character for two different or um, group of individuals where when that happens, it causes them to have false judgments on one another. And that creates confusion and chaos, which causes separation and then basically the rest goes downhill. And when I recognize those type of things, I look at it and I'm actually amused by it because it's when I see that, it's when you present it, it's not received um, in the way that it should do to the overly observative or overly analytical uh, syndromes that takes place. And um, I'm not saying I'm exempt from that. However, uh, when you learn those type of things, you learn to control them. And you and allow it to be more so of a, a tool set for you rather than it being used as something that's going to be your downfall. I, I recognize those things and I see that it's going based off of uh, an experience where most people say experience is the best teacher, but I don't believe that's true. I believe evaluated experience is the best teacher. In this case, it's an experience, but it's not evaluated because there's only one that engage into a battle and which they were not even meant to be placed at and there's no referee technically um referee being symbolic to a mediator or a one that other than themselves having awareness of it to be able to observe and analyze outside of the one that's actually engaging in that battle um these are things that are highly important to me because it can make or break um a massive amount of types of relationships and when I say that I say relationships such as like business family friends uh, um, clients whoever it applies it's universal so this is something that I just urge you all to when you're engaging in certain things just make sure that you're actually observing more so engaging when you observe it allows you to see it from a bird's eye view you're uh, you're supposed to be represented as an eagle so if you're in an eagle and you're soaring above the clouds, you're able to see things down from bird's eye view, but you actually have keen eye where you can lock in and pinpoint exactly what you're supposed to be focused on and nothing else because you'll get distracted. So when an eagle does that, it swoops down no matter what, it um, distort 
or cloud or in, or interfere with his vision, it will still stay locked in because now it's tuned in, not just by its sight, but also by rhythm. And when you learn to go with the rhythm, whenever you're engaged with anything, even if it's conversation, just understand everything does have a rhythm. Find that rhythm so that way you can dance rather than you just be fighting yourself all the time. So I just find just amusement in a lot of different things lately. And it's just incredible because when you're really amused by certain things, it allows you to recognize where you're at in your current state of life. So guys, I just pray that this whole um, video, uh, this live was definitely motivation and inspiration to you all. Um, if not, then hey, I can't do anything about it. However, I am confident that you guys will be able to take something. I tell people all the time, take the meats without the bones. And guys, have a blessed one. Once again, elegant champagne. And this is a moment with me with also representing abstract thoughts of transition mind. And also give a great big shout out to Minds Up with Takiya Diamond as well. And also Javon for Loving Link Up. And then also for uh, Tamika for her uh, The Pink Elephant as well. Definitely gotta give a shout out to them. Um, so guys, with that being said, you guys know what I do. Um, if you don't, just keep following the content. Got a couple more projects coming up for you guys. With that being said, lessons one.